2 times 2 is equal to 4. Once more, multiplying by 2, we get 8. It's a breeze. Now, may I ask you a question? How many 2s do we need to multiply to get 16? We need to multiply 4 of the 2s to get 16, right? If we multiply 2s 100 times, will it not be so inefficient to write 2 followed by multiplication sign followed by 2 and again followed by multiplication sign up until we get to it 100 times? To get rid of this mess, we use log. 2 multiplied 4 times equals 16 is written as log 16 to the base 2. This gives the number of times we need to multiply 2 to get 16, which is 4. 4 is called the logarithm, and 2 is called the base. Logarithm, or exponent, is a number that tells how often the base is used in multiplication, and base is a number that is multiplied repeatedly. Base can be a natural number or a fractioned number, and two most commonly used values of base are 10 and e. Log to the base 10 is kind of intuitive. Speaking in multiples of 10 is simpler. We have a simpler scale to work with when we use log to the base 10. Log 10 to the base 10 is 1. Log 100 to the base 10 is 2. Log 1000 to the base 10 is 3. We can see that a scale of natural numbers can easily handle multiples of 10. But the log to the base e is what I'm most curious about. Log to the base e is called natural log, and it can be abbreviated as ln. ln of 20 is the natural log of 20, which is log 20 to the base e. The first step to understanding e is to grasp the concept of growth. Consider the case where a specific object doubles every time period. This is the present day, at each point on the timeline represents a single period of time. Assume you start with $2. It doubles at the end of the first time period, giving you $4. Once you reach the conclusion of the second period, our $2 investment has grown to $8. What are the inferences of this expansion? We can see that the amount at the end of each time period are powers of 2. At the starting point, the amount is 2 raised to 1, or simply 2. After completion of subsequent time periods, it goes on like this. 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, and so on. Another way at which we look at growth, which doubles the amount every year, is that there is a 100% increase every year. 2 added to 100% of 2 equals 4. The value of $2 was raised to $4 by a 100% rise. $4 grow to $8 at the end of next year. To put it another way, doubling the value is the same as increasing the amount by 100%. But there is a little tiny assumption we have made while calculating our returns. And this assumption holds the key to understanding E in its true sense. Growth is assumed to happen in a stepwise, discontinuous manner. Consider the interval of time that exists between two periods. No progress has been made in this intermediate time, and all of a sudden, the amount doubles erratically. Nothing changes in between two time periods, and then it grows by twofold. Once more, there is no increase, and then it doubles all of a sudden. It's just not how the nature works, you know? It's important to remember that the amount must increase steadily during the time in between. If you are four feet tall today, and five feet tall a year later, it doesn't mean that you will not grow for the next 364 days, and you will wake up on the 365th day to surprisingly see yourself taller by one foot. Your height will increase gradually over time. It's so unnatural to have discontinuous growth. Let's take a closer look 
and see if it works in the example where we saw the amount doubling every year. Let's first try to make our growth a little less discontinuous by considering a semi-annual growth rather than having realized a growth on year-to-year -year basis. Semi-annual growth means splitting one year into two equal parts of six months each. Splitting that 100%, the growth would be 50% in the first six months and another 50% in the next six months. This is how it would seem. In the first half, we earned 50% interest on our original $2, which amounted to an additional $1. But what to expect in the second half? Will there be one more dollar added to $3 to make it $4 by the end of second period? Or will I get something more than $4 by the end of one year, just because I split one year into two equal time periods? Let's check it now. By the end of the first six months, we have $3, which will become the original amount for the second half. Now we earn 50% interest on $3, and by the end of second period, we pocket $4.5 instead of $4. This time, we will also earn 50% return on the $1 interest we earned in the first period. Thus, we earn interest on the original $2 we had at the very beginning, as well as on the interest accumulated in the first period. This is called compound interest. Compounding simply means earning interest on interest. This is better than doubling every single year. Let's make an effort to go even further. What if the year was divided into four equal parts? Every three months, the amount increases by 25%. This will give you $2.5 after the first quarter, $3.12 after the second quarter, $3.90 after the third quarter, and $4.88 at the end of the last period. Clearly, the more periods of time, the bigger the rewards will be. Now, our rapacious mind is pondering something. Is it possible to obtain an endless supply of cash by increasing the time intervals endlessly. The return will be higher if I divide the year into 12 equal time periods. I can get an even better return if I divide the year into 365 equal time periods. If there are 365 days in a year, then $2 invested at the beginning of the year will be worth this much money at the end of the year. In other words, it is likely that if we considerably increase the number of time periods, then the return will increase significantly as well. Let's move on to the next set of calculations. There are 1 million different time periods in one year. It is important to note that the returns improve, but the improvement is marginal and highly insignificant when compared to the increase in the number of time intervals. For 100% annual growth rate and endlessly large number of time intervals, the final return freezes somewhere to 2.718 times the original amount. And this number, 2.718, becomes our beloved E. After all, we can't obtain an endless supply of cash. Thus, letter E stands for the maximum return we can earn after a single year of compounding growth at 100%. With this, we come to the end of the video. And if you really enjoyed our team's work, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to share it with your friends. Thanks.